does the Bible say? The Bible says that we should prepare our hearts so that the word falls on good ground. Amen? And a very important thing is that we're going to share about our equipment as believers, but we're also going to talk about why sometimes it's difficult to hear God's voice. So we're going to have fun tonight. And I promise not to put anybody on the spot, but I might ask you to read if you want. Okay? So, Father, thank you so much for the word. We ask, Lord God, that you will produce revelation knowledge. Lord, as we hear the word tonight, open our eyes of our understanding. Lord, minister by the Holy Spirit and give us understanding on the level of our understanding and growth. Father, we'll always remember to give you praise and glory and to try to not to live our life for you naturally, but to let you live through us spiritually so that we may attain to the glory that you have purpose and plan for each individual heart. In Jesus' name, and those that agree said, amen. amen. I know I'm praying with my hat on, but it's got a band in it. And those of you coming in, to the garage by you to welcome we appreciate the fact that you're hungry for the word of god amen but don't let just looking at it, something like this be your only source get to church if you haven't got a good church come to this one get to bible study where you can be live and there's interaction all right bless you and i bless all you guys all right how to series we've been having a good time haven't we yeah. all right today's lesson i want to encourage you to grasp these principles and recognize who you are in Christ. Growing and building trust in equipment that God has given us when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is such a wonderful thrill. And also knowing God loves us and wants us to be personal with him and that each one of us could be personal with him. So there's enough God to go around. Can you say amen? Amen. You know, I, I remember talking to my dad once, and I won't linger on this too long. And I asked him, I said, why don't you, dad, ask God to help you with your, with your car? And he says, I don't want to bother God. He's pretty busy. But I want to let you know God has set it up that he can be individual every day, all the time, being with you if you will access him or you would address him. He likes to interchange with us. Amen. And so that's what I mean by walking with God. <clears throat> it's a thrill. How about you? Are you hungry and thirsting after God? How about have you been able to hear God's voice and understand his will for our, our life? God speaks to us through many different ways. And we should know how to discern each way in which God speaks to us and become obedient to what he says to us. Why? Because if we're obedient over the little things, he'll increase it. So let's see what the word of God says about the subject matter and how to develop a listening ear. Now, remember all that we've studied so far, you know, through the years. How important it is for a Christian to be a good listener. How important? Anybody want to share? How important is it? Absolutely, Absolutely important. Jesus said, those with ears, let them what? Right, so... Hearing is very important. Now, if you think about today, it is really important. I, I noticed that people today have problem listening. Kids today, sometimes when you're trying to explain something wonderful to them, they'll look at you and say, you're just lecturing me. Don't go, don't buy the excuse, parents, that the kid's saying, you're just, and here you want to explain something about the word, or you want to share how to do it better so they don't hurt themselves. And they'll look at you and say, you're just lecture." I think the whole the attitude of the church is kind of like that. Don't preach at us. No, this is not preaching at you. This is sharing the word of God with you, right? So it's very important that we have ears that want to hear. Number two is we, we should have eyes to what? See, Right? Because having eyes to see, the word see there means also to perceive. If you have eyes to perceive something, it might be a trap so you don't step there. If you have eyes to see something, it might be a good opportunity. So go there. You follow what I'm saying? Jesus said, blessed are your eyes for they see. Right? Amen? <clears throat> and uh, my throat's getting a little scratchy. We had some great food before coming over here. I don't know who the chef was, but they need to be hired. 
And then God said, what do you say about our heart? He said that we should have a heart to what? Can you remember? He says a heart to want to understand. It doesn't even have to understand. It just have a heart to understand. Now, it's important because when we know God's voice, when we hear God's voice, and when I'm going to train you tonight about hearing God's voice, there is a part of you that can't hear God's voice. You can hear voices, but it's not God's voice. So remember, believer, that we're a spiritual person first, and we're also a natural or a fleshly person. I'm not meaning negative fleshly, but we are a physical person and we are a spiritual person, right? So we have spiritual ears and we have physical ears, right? So there is a voice in each part of us. And so this is also for those that are coming in to the garage. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a, a body. Each one of those has voices. So what would be the voice of your spirit? Just think about it a minute. You know, don't try to dazzle anybody with the answer. Yeah, that would be your conscience. The voice of your spirit. Let's forget about being saved right now. Your spirit man, your, your spirit person, which you all are, spirit woman or spirit man, you have a voice in your spirit, and that's called your conscience. Now, how many has ever heard your conscience say, don't do that? Kind of nod at me, you know. No, yeah. Amen. How many has ever heard something in your conscience, in, in deep down in your conscience, say, do that? You know, do that good thing and don't do that bad thing, right? So we know the voice of the conscience or the voice of the spirit is a conscience. The voice of our soul. Can you anybody tell me what the voice of the soul is? You have a voice in your soul and you hear it. We're trying to differentiate between the voices. You have a voice in your soul. Most people don't have a problem with it, but some people do. And that is the ability to listen to the wrong voice in their soul. So your soul has a voice. It's called reason. Reason. Yes. What do you mean? Because Jesus, uh, actually God said, come and let us sit and reason together, right? Didn't he say to Job, Job, where were you and I spread out all this kind of thing? You're sitting around thinking how smart you are in your reasoning. Does, isn't there a little bit in Proverbs, a little bit of a warning for us? And that is, lean not to your own understanding. Reasoning. So we need to have our mind renewed so our reasoning can be something we can trust. Now, there are certain truths that you've been taught all your life. You can trust those truths, right? Uh, you, you know how to drive a car, right? That's a truth. It might not be a spiritual truth. Now, so we found out the voice of our spirit, the voice of our soul. What would be the voice of our body? See, so we're spirit, soul, and body, right? What would be the voice of our body? Think about it before you answer. Yeah, somebody got it by YouTube. And that is, yeah, your feelings. Feelings. I used to sing this a lot. Nothing more than feelings. So when you're feeling not very good, should you make choices and decisions like that? No. So what we really need to do is we need to hear the voice of God. Right? Say, I need to hear the voice of God. All right. So God will speak to us in many different ways. But the Bible says, so let's go into our scripture. John 10, if you have your Bible open up there. I always like to look at the notes ahead of time. And find out what scripture we're going to. And I kind of already marked them so I, I can flip to them real quick. <clears throat> and I'm cheating up here a little bit. Why? Because it's all printed out for me by my lovely wife. All right, we're in John chapter 10. Let me read it to you. Listen to what it says. Jesus is speaking. He said, most assuredly, in other words, get this, everybody. Most assuredly, this is important. I say to you, he who does not enter to the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. What Jesus is talking about, is he talking about two meanings here. Everyone say two meanings. There's two meanings. There's a phys physical meaning, and there's a spiritual meaning on that phrase. If you don't enter by the door, but try to climb up some other way, you're a thief and a robber. Now, <coughs> so I can define it for you. Who's the thief and robber in the Bible? The devil is. So something 
that he came in the wrong way it makes him a thief and robber okay now can the devil get saved no so two things this door here is natural birth into the earth being born naturally and being born again spiritually so there are actually two doors in order for you to have a say in the earth everyone say say you have to be born here okay right right God said he gave the earth to Adam didn't he so because we're born here we have a say here now Satan was Satan born here no he came and stole the earth from Adam so he was a thief and a robber so he came in a different way than being born here he stole it from Adam who was born or created here right so that's one type being born here naturally Satan wasn't and the second is to be enter into the things of the spirit you have to go through Jesus now Satan instead of going through Jesus tries to get into the spirit realm or into the kingdom of God some other way and let me ask you Denise how about you Terry um, you guys how what is the other way Satan is trying to get into the kingdom people do it too can you guess how about you religion 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 says if you're good enough God will accept you some of the problem with the Israelites is that they think because they're Israelites they've been grandfathered in how many know you're not saved because you're born a certain person hello doesn't the Israelites have to be born again too what say ye do the Jews have to be born again you're all looking like you don't know the answer are you kidding me you must be born again what did Jesus say in John 3 to Nicodemus the one a teacher of the Jews at he came and he said you've got to be born again you can't just be religious so remember all that came before Jesus because he's going to mention it in John 10 all came before him dying and rising again were thieves and robbers why because they were all religious why did the Jews forget to accept Jesus because they thought them being Jews was enough and that's why they said Jesus we be Abraham's seed and we don't have to answer to anyone that's actual scripture folks so what is what's the problem the problem is in the natural realm by being religious you can't get in and operate in the spirit how many know it's so you have to go in by the door who's the door to the father Jesus who's the door to the kingdom Jesus right so what happens to us as Christians is we have a tendency to want to impress God through the natural acts of works and I want to let you know you can impress God if you let Jesus lead you in your works if God didn't tell you to do that then you doing it for Jesus God says oh yeah that's nice but did if Jesus didn't ask you to do it then what happens is you could lose some real energy and trying to get a project done if you're not doing it with God's power someone say oh me <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that okay now it says but he who enters by the door verse 2 he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep who's the shepherd of the sheep Jesus was Jesus born here naturally yes, yes. was he born is he the door yes. yes so there's two doors he was born here naturally which qualified him to die and rise again and be the door to the Heavenly Father spiritually so he who enters by the door natural birth and Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep and that's Jesus Christ he was born naturally and he also is the way in which we approach the father it says to him the doorkeeper the Holy Spirit I hope you're underlying making notes folks you can't just think you get it to him the the doorkeeper opens 
First the Holy Spirit opened to Jesus and then to everyone that followed him in him. Can you say amen? That's you and I. And to him, the doorkeeper, the Holy Spirit opens and the sheep, what? No, 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 no. Come on. And to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. You see what happens? If your voice is louder than God's voice, you're going to get confused. But see, a born-again believer, how many born-again believers do we have? You have God living on the inside of you. So you should hear his voice. If God lives on inside of you, and you have a voice of your spirit, then you should be able to hear God's voice. But where do you hear it? In your head? No. In your flesh, your feelings? No, God doesn't lead you by your feelings. No. He leads you by your conscience or speaks in your conscience. And his voice is authoritative and speaks in the third person. So you'll hear your spirit say in your conscience, don't do that. And it'll be in the core of your being, not from your top of your head. So if you're hearing voices in your head, do what all the rest of us do. And this is for people that do hear voices and think you can't shut them off. You resist them. You pay them no mind. And guess what? Those voices will go away shortly. But if you listen to them and you cringe from them, you feed those voices and they'll get louder. So we don't listen to voices in our head. We listen to God's voice in our what? Come on, Joe, in our spirit. So guess what? Joe's in the supermarket and he's, he's shopping and doing all those great things he loves to do. And God says, go over, the, buy, over there and buy two milks. Now, if Joe's just kind of thinking about things that hurt in through things, he's not going to pick that up. But if he's just kind of loving on the Lord and resting in Jesus while he's going through the store, guess what? God will be able to get his attention because, what, he's being spiritually sensitive. My sheep shall hear my voice. Everybody gets caught up, and how do I recognize Jesus' voice? Well, it sounds just like your voice, except for he speaks more in line with the word. Now, don't lose me here. This is very important to you, because some of us, some of you, might really be living in things that are not right, because you've not heard God's voice on it. All right, so I'm not done with you. Let's continue on. Please don't write yourself off yet. <clears throat> it says the sheep will hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by what? Name, you know when God speaks to me, he calls me Carrie. Can you hear your name being called sometimes from God? I know Samuel did. I'm not any more special. Samuel's not any more special than you. you. Can you listen? And you can actually say, God, what's my name? And listen into your conscience. And he'll tell you your name. Not your head. It's right in the core of your very being. He'll tell you. Why? So you'll get used to his name. Do you want to stop right now and ask? Yeah, let's stop right now and ask. Come on, let's do an experiment. You know, don't fake like you're studying the word. Eyes on me. One, two, three. Eyes on me. One, two. My eyes are on you. Okay, let's close, close your eyes. And I want you, from your heart, say, Father, in Jesus' name, I love you. I'm covered in the blood. So I may hear your voice. What's my name? And now listen deep in your core. When you hear it, raise your hand. And if you're not hearing, you're listening with your head. And that'll mess you up every time. Listen, right in the core of your being. You know what your name is, but listen. What's, what's, if you're female, it's going to sound female. If you're male, it's going to sound male. But if you don't know how to get in the spirit, you're going to have to go back and learn how to do that so you can hear it clearly. 
How many heard your voice? Everybody look around now. Look at the hands up. Everybody's hearing it. See? And, and you know, and don't feel disappointed if you're not hearing it. The, the thing is, you need to exercise more of your spirituality and, and don't exercise the physical part. Now, this is not to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to tell you, if you sow to the flesh, you have the flesh reap corruption. It shuts you down. And if you sow into the spirit, you get real more sensitive. So I'm just trying to encourage you, okay? Yeah. Yep, there you go. Yeah. And Sharon's your middle name, right? And it means what? Princess. Yeah. So sometimes we we kind of figure out God's going to say this. And so already you start locking them out because you're, you're thinking too hard. You're, you're trying too hard. You see, you don't try to live for Jesus. No, 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 no. You just live for Jesus because you love him. You people say, well, if I pray harder. No, no. If you just get with them more, then the praying hard stops being hard and it just comes, becomes a flow. And I'm trying to teach you how God wants to touch the Latter-day Church, excuse that phrase, touch the church in these last days and make us more strong and, and sensitive and more usable by God and not caught up with such this flack and confusion that is out there in these last days. All right. So let's go on and read. And he brings out his own sheep, and he goes before them. Now here, I asked the Lord about this. This is not talking about just the end of the age, Denise. It's talking about he brings us out of ourself. He said to me, he says, no, I bring you out of yourself so you learn to walk in the Spirit. I'm bringing you out of your old man and into your new man. Well, how do I do that? You, you have to be sensitive to him. Now, how many here know that God saved you and received you just the way you were? Come on, let me see the hands. He saved you just the way you were. But how many here thank him that he's smart enough not to leave you that way? <laughs> we should be growing. We should be developing. Hello. And if you're not, you come here. Or, or go by YouTube and go to the garage and listen to some of the depth coming out of the Word of God. Whether God uses me or my wife or some of you people. Listen. Listen to the depth of the Word speaking to you directly. Coming out of the preacher or the teacher. Don't just sit there and say, well, it doesn't work for me. No. That's just what Jeremiah 17, 5 says. You're like a bramble bush. You know? The wind blows and you go. You know, we don't want to be like that. Say amen. All right, now, <clears throat> he goes on. <clears throat> and it says, and he will bring out his own sheep out of, out of their own darkness, out of their own situation, and finally out of, out of this mess. And he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. And look at the next phrase. For they know his voice. Hear his voice, and then this word know. It's the Greek word gnosis, which means know by experience. In other words, you're hearing it, exercising it over and over again. It becomes something you know. And then the next phrase says, because they know not the voice of strangers, right? So look what the rest of it says. It says, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from them. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, what's a thief and a robber? A stranger, right? You remember, they taught the kids for the longest time. Jill would probably appreciate this. Stranger danger. Stranger, you know, stranger danger. Woo, 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 woo. Folks, stranger danger. Stranger danger. Lots of too many entertaining the stranger dangers, you know. That's the old man. Okay? Stranger danger. You're not going to follow your, your own wants and your feelings anymore. How many know, let me, let me say it this way, let me encourage you to walk with God in such a way that your flesh becomes a stranger. That you become strange to your old nasty habits and such. I tell people, I says, don't try to give up something. Get with God and guarantee it will give you up. You know, something unclean can't hang around the holy. <laughs> No boogaloo can clip on to somebody who's filled with God. Well, let's move right on. Okay, so almost done with you. And it says, 
So they will not by me, no means follow a stranger, but they will flee from him. Are you fleeing from your selfishness? Are we fleeing from those who want to corrupt us? Or are we just headed right straight in? These are the last days. Perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves. Covetous, boastful. That just breaks it down what it's like. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Now look at verse 6. And Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand. What did we say in the beginning? Having ears to what? Hear. Eyes to and having an understanding heart. Even Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1. He said that God would give you revelation knowledge and an understanding heart, right? Amen. All right. Boy, I get excited about this. You got to light your candle, light your candle, light your candle, put it on the front porch of hell. Amen. Let me ask you, when you got up this morning, you know, does Satan knows Christ, doesn't he? He knows, he knows Jesus, doesn't he? Let me ask you, do they know you in hell? Are they trembling because you're a child of God? A sin-defacing, devil-chasing, overcoming child of God? Yes, you are. All you got to do is begin to move in the spirit and stop acting physically, fleshly. And what I mean by that is you cannot work for a greater walk. You walk for a greater character development. God develops you as you spend time with him. World, the world doesn't develop you. Hard times don't develop you. They often make us hard. So don't let that happen to you. Okay, with all these scriptures, let me give you some point. The door here is twofold. Who's the door? What's the door? The door is to the spirit. Who? Jesus Christ. The door to having say in the earth is natural birth. Very good. Give yourself a hand. Amen. So they're a twofold door. You have to be born here in order to die for mankind. Uh, you have to be born here in order to be saved. Satan can never be saved. Natural birth into the world and then spiritual birth into the kingdom through Christ. Second of all, Jesus was the first to be who? Born again. Why was Jesus the first to be born again? Anyone would tell me? That's right, because if he wasn't the first, we couldn't get born again. He had to be the first fruits, the first born from the dead. Amen. Jesus was the first to be born again, and then he entered in by the, the two doors, natural birth, spiritual birth. Jesus was born again, so guess what? He, now We now go through him. Then thirdly, through the gifts of the Spirit, revelation and power and vocal gifts, we can operate and flow. All right, let me ask you, what are some of the ways God speaks to us? I'm just going to throw it out. Through the Word of God. Very good, Denise. What's another way that he would speak to us? And there's a lot of ways. So I want to kind of throw some out so people know. They're not running around listening for voices because if they feel they can't hear God's voice, then God can speak to you through his word. He can speak to you through the Holy Spirit, couldn't he? Oh, he speaks to us through the apostle, prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher of the fivefold ministry. Find it in Ephesians 4. How else? He can speak to us through visions and dreams. Can he not? Amen. So basically... That, those are all great ways to be spoke. But also he speaks to us through the still, small voice in our conscience, right? We're talking about knowing God's voice. Now, the folks, I believe, that, and don't, and don't get mad at me, I believe the reason why more of the church doesn't hear God's voice is they need to spend a little more time with God. Okay, now, please, I don't, I'm not saying you don't spend any time with God. I'm just simply saying you've got to spend more time if you, you're not hearing or spiritually sensitive like you want to be. If you're going to do anything, get with God more. He'll cause that to happen. You cannot, by fasting and praying, make yourself more spiritual. You can make yourself less fleshly. <laughs> you see, when I pray... It's not me getting God so much to do something. It's getting me out of the way 
so God can. And when I fast, it's shutting down my flesh so that it won't resist or walk the other way when God's trying to tap me on the shoulder, get me to go right. I'm going left because I'm listening to my flesh. Amen. I'm amazed how many times the devil visits Christians on a Saturday night and gets them so out of sorts they can't receive anything Sunday morning. Who are you listening to? Certainly not God. Hello? So we need to hear God's voice. It's very rich and very important for us to deepen our walk, to spend time with God and be able to allow God to develop the skill of hearing God's voice. Now again, when you want to hear God's voice, you don't listen in your head. You don't listen by your feelings. You don't wait. And this is what a lot of Christians do. Please don't get me wrong. Don't run around looking for somebody to give you a word. Boy, you're looking at me crazy. There are so many Christians running around waiting for somebody to give them the word. A word from God. Let me just tell you something now. Please don't get mad at me. Get the word from God yourself. Because when you start doing that, you're gambling. Other, you're causing other people to, to lean towards sin, to want to give you a word, instead of you getting it yourself. Why? Because now our eyes are on people again. What is one of Satan's largest distractions for us? To put our eyes on who? People. Oh, if I just marry that lady, my whole life's going to be better. Your eyes are on people. If I go to that church, I'll be more blessed. Your eyes are on people. Get them on Jesus. Now, when I look at, like, say, if I look at Marvin, I don't see Marvin physically. I look at the Jesus in Marvin. Am I surprised when I don't hear, you know, with many, many other Christians, I see the potential of Jesus in them. That's not easy to do. <laughs> Moving right along. All right. And fourthly, when we listen, this tells you and I that we should know God and know his, how he speaks to his kids. So <clears throat> through the word of God, knowing the ways in which he speaks, through the word of God, through the Old Testament and the New Testament, to through his people. Okay. Now remember... Always, if I, if, I, if, I, if I give my wife a word, I, I feel, honey, I was praying, I feel God wants me to say, say something to her, okay? First of all, me saying something to her is never supposed, now listen to me, ever supposed to lead her. Me telling her what to do is no, no, no. God telling her what to do is yes, yes, yes. So me telling her, God told me to tell you this. It should, now listen, it should tell her something God already told her. So it should be more of a confirmation or a witness of what God says to you personally. So if I say, God, I feel really God's telling me to say this to you. She says, yeah, he told me that earlier. You see, that's okay. But if I say, no, God told me you need to lose weight or you need to stop smoking, or you need to do that, and God hasn't said anything to her, I'm out of line. It's me hoping to change her, you see? And that is nothing more than witchcraft. If you're trying to change your husband, or you're trying to change your wife, and you're not letting Jesus do it, you are meddling where God should be doing the thing. And that's how Christian couples get into trouble. They start telling people each other what to do and what they should be doing instead of let pray and say, God, you see the situation. Jesus, would you tell him? Would you tell her? Better way to do it. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right. So how would, how would we know how to do that? You'd have to hear God's voice. I remember one time we had a service and I let everybody listen to God's voice. And, and I, we're going to ask God to give you something to say. And I had people say what God told them. And not everybody heard God's voice. But you know what? We got a prophecy from God from different people. But so each one got a section of that by listening and being sensitive to God's voice. 
Now you say, well, what, what's the importance of that? The importance of that is, so when God gives you something fresh, what if you're right in the middle of satanic realm, in some area where you need to hear God's voice? Better get to the place, you know, where you've developed that skill. And how do I go about doing it? Well, come here. I'll teach you. Sit down with me. Make an appointment. Sit down. In an hour's time, I can teach you how to do it. Well, that sounds a little proud for you to say something like that. No, my pastor did the same thing with me. He wouldn't let us go minister if we couldn't hear God's voice. He says, because we're going to minister ourselves or our opinion, and we don't want that to happen. Let's move on. So through the word of God, through people, thirdly, through the gifts of the spirit, through what? The still small voice. And finally, through circumstances. How many know God can speak through circumstances? How many's ever had circumstances? Say something to you. Come on, look up at me, smile. How many's ever, maybe you heard something say, don't do that, and you did it, and circumstances gave you a message, and the message was, don't do that again, right? <laughs> Very good. Circumstances <coughs> are not the way to hear God's voice. Circumstances beat on us like the waves of, it says, uh, the waves of the sea and the rains come and the winds blow upon that and it cannot shake it. Those are circumstances. They're going to blow upon everybody, every person. It's going to rain on the just and the unjust. Why? Because it's in the world. It's a fallen world. So therefore, where are you standing? Are you standing on the sand? And your sand castle's going to flow away? Because that's the flesh. The sand castle is the flesh. And if you're moving out from your spirit, because if you're born again, you're in the spirit too. And if you're doing then you're standing on the rock. He that heareth my sayings and does them, I'll show you, he's like unto a wise man that digs the foundation and lays it upon Jesus, the rock. But you got to hear and do, hear and do, hear and do. And the only way to do that is we've got to have a clear understanding and hear God's voice clearly. And you say, well, pastor, I, I still don't hear God's voice clearly. Now, now, I know, and I don't know if it's what it is, but the Holy Spirit just told me that you're thinking, I don't need to hear God's voice. I, I can do all this. And God says, that's what's wrong with your thinking because you always compare how you're doing with everybody else. And if they're not as good, then you pat yourself on the back. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's pride. Instead, Teach me, God. Teach me, God. Bring people in my life that will show me how to do it better. Come on. We need to learn. We need to grow. Because if you're not growing, you're getting stale. And sometimes people, they have blind spots. Everyone say, not me. <laughs> we all have self-blind spots. So, so what are you saying? I'm saying if I could hear God's voice, I'd rather have him tell me about my blind spots or the word tell me about blind spots, then rather than my wife tell me about my blind spots. No, I'm just, she's gentle too. All right, so let's go. All right, so discerning who might be talking. Folks, the Bible tells us that every good gift comes from God. So whatever's not good is what? Bad, right? So if the voice or what you think might be God tells you, Get up and go away. Run, 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 run. Run, run. Is that God? God doesn't tell you to run away. He doesn't tell you to quit. What would God tell us? He would tell us to pray. He would tell us to gather, to be together, to join in. I've got you. He would comfort while the other voice would tell you to run away. You Go do this. Panic. Ba, ba, ba. Move in fear, right? So we need to begin to discern. So discerning who is speaking to us. We should not be ignorant about the enemy, nor blame God for things that he didn't do. We should have a, dear, a clear understanding of who God is and what his character and nature are like. Match that up with the things that you are hearing from the word and in your, in your voice. Someone say amen. Remember what John 10.5 says. Yet they would by will by no means follow a stranger. Folks, Christians today, and I'm not putting anyone down, but just think about it. They are walking naturally with a spiritual God. 
and yet they have every attribute to be spiritual and to walk spiritual every day of our lives. But we're not taking advantage either of that or we don't know how to do it. And we're missing out. Folks, think about that. That the old man complains. The new man just loves God. The old man doubts and fears while the new man just wants to be with God. So which one do you want to walk from? Your new man or your old man? Well, we know it's a new man. Think of the children in the wilderness. Here's 11-day journey, folks. 11-day journey. Well, let, let's extend it. Let's say a month's journey. Just give them a benefit of the doubt. Whole month's journey. And they're taking in, making sure everybody's taken care of. And because of their complaining, because of their physical doubting and all of the things. Oh, God. Listen to this. What was one of the things they kept saying when they were going through hard times to children of Israel? With to God, we go back to Israel. Folks, if God's brought you this far, don't you dare say, would to God go back to the world, go back to my old way of living. No, 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 no. Look at your neighbor and say, no, no. <laughs> Amen. And so here's that whole month. Remember, we extended to a month. That whole month journey lasted how long? 40 years. How about your journey? How about our journey? How's it lasting? Are you growing as fast as you really like to? Maybe not. But let me encourage you. I know how to grow fast. I have to talk to you as a pastor to encourage you to get and spend the time you need with God. And, and if you're still talking the way you did two years ago, still having the same problems you're going through two years ago, let's, let's say a year ago, get with God. Come on, let him develop the boy skills so you can hear his commands and, and know what, at least not know what not to do or where not to step. Someone say amen. All right, so a voice of a stranger they will not follow. Let's go on. Next scripture is down to verse 10 of John 10. Look what it says. We know the scripture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal to kill and to destroy. Who's the thief in the Bible? We know it's the devil. Jesus said, I've come that they may have what? Life and that they may have it more or what? Abundantly. God might say to you one time and, and you might not be able to pick it up. And he might say to you, what, do you, what have you done to all the good blessings I've given you? What have you done with them? Well, Lord, I kept them for you. Here they all are. What, you never gave, you never did anything with it? No, no, I just held on to it because I knew I would need it someday. We know that kind of thinking comes from what kind of person? The spiritual person or the physical person? Yes, physical person, natural person thinks that way. And we know what Jesus said, what is the profit of man if he gains the whole world or loses his own soul? Amen. We don't need to lose our mind over trying to live life. Listen. I, I'd rather you wear somebody's hand-me-down shirt than, than to lose my soul trying to get a brand new one. Or to borrow or put it on a credit card. Come on now. Whoops, maybe I stepped off into an area and he just about stepped back. All right, so let's catch this. John 10 says, the thief comes and Jesus I come to bless. James 1, look at this, verse 16 through 18 in your notes. Do not be deceived, my brethren. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. So we know good and perfect comes from who? God. So who put the tree in the garden of the knowledge of good and evil? If, if everything good and perfect comes from. Just, just a thought. Make you dig in your scripture and get back with me on it. But it says, look, look, perfect gift, good and perfect gift comes from who? Folks, come on. Comes from God. Amen. And whatever is not good and perfect comes from what? Devil. Amen. Or some way works its way in. God says, I don't change. There's no variable shadow of turning. Verse 18. Now, this is why the word of God is so important to be in your soul. Okay. Why is that, Pastor? Listen to the next word. In, in verse 18. I got the hiccups. 
And it says this. Of his own will, he brought us forth. How did he bring us forth, Denise? What does it say? Verse 18. Of his own will, brought us forth of... He brought you... How does God bring us out of ourselves? How does God bring us into who we are spiritually? By the word of truth. By the word of God. So if you're never in the Bible, you're still going to look like the same old crusty you used to be. How's God going to bring you out of yourself? Remember, my sheep hear my voice and I lead them out. How's God going to bring you out of yourself? Remember, every man's tempted when he's drawn away, away from God into his own desires. I mean, the truths always match up. They always match up. Carnal, natural versus spiritual. Line up. You're to be lining up yourself with the word, right? It's not pastor's job to make you feel bad so you change. No, it's not pastor's job to make you feel good so you change. No, my job is to give you the word and you line your life up with the word of God. And if you're not making it and lining up, don't get discouraged. Just ask God to help you. Can you say amen? <clears throat> All right. So it goes on. Look at the next scripture, or the next points. God is not the author of confusion. When you get around confusion, what should you do? <laughs> Find it and rebuke it, right? When he speaks, his, he makes it clear. See, if God's trying to tell you something and you're not hearing his voice, he'll make it clear. He'll keep repeating himself, especially if it's something you need to deal with. Yeah. See, I don't need you to tell me what's wrong with me. I know what's wrong with me. And the only way that could, I can be delivered what's my flaws is to go to God and have him deliver me. It doesn't do any good. You know how us guys, I'm, I'm just blaming it on the guys tonight. Us guys have this tendency to speak the obvious. I mean, we just speak the obvious. Boy, that's a, an awful looking pimple. <laughs> At least I do anyway. You know, so I try with God's grace not to say the obvious. We need to say the spiritual. You can laugh along with me. Okay. So God brings us forth from the word of God. So if you're never in the word of God, he can't bring you out into the spirit realm. You're going to trip over yourself. So God's not the author. Two, God puts his fingerprint on all that he, that he says, all that he does. What's that fingerprint? Well, we tell you it's in, it's in uh, 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 Corinthians. It's exhortation. It's comfort and edification. See, the devil can't counterfeit that. So when God actually speaks to you, he will, number one, exhort you, and then he will what? Edify you, and he will comfort you. He'll say, look, you need to straighten that out. I do. He says, but it'll be all right. I'm going to help you. Is that all right? And he says, and you're going to be better off. Edification. God's fingerprints on everything he says, the word, everything he says. So if you're going to represent and speak in behalf of God, there's got to be exhortation, comfort, and edification in it. Why? Because otherwise Satan can sneak in there. Amen. You have somebody give you a word, God says, you better repent. You better get your act together. Ah, I say it to you. You look at him and say, well, I rebuke you because that's not God. What's wrong with that? There's no fingerprint on it. There's an exhortation. That was an exhortation. But there was no comfort. Ooh. And there was no edification. You're going to die if you don't change. This is not Old Testament, folks. Come on. I'm amazed that the church so hung up with waving flags and, and doing feasts and holidays and all that and can't walk with Jesus. Breaks my heart. Let's go on. I, I wave a flag or two, and, and I celebrate feasts, so don't think I don't. I just know the reason I do. Amen. Instead of being like everybody else. Okay, so let's go on. This is so good. All right? Now, 
Know the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. Do you know the difference now? Everybody? How many know the whole Bible is important, but you got to know the difference of old and new and why? Because if you don't, you're going to get all confused. People do all the time. They're trying to live Old Testament and getting under condemnation in the new. Amen? What you need to do is live for Jesus, and then the old things will begin. Be, yeah, absolutely, you know. Okay, so I don't want to emphasize. So always, next thing is, if we are his body and his children, think of this. He will lead us, right? He will guide us, right? Not abuse us. This one thing set me free. I was told years and years ago, not by my pastor, but by others who wanted to begin to use the gifts that I had. You know, Some people are very gifted and other people want to use those gifts and other people for the wrong reasons too. And they all told me that God was going to get me. And if I didn't straighten up, hew it straight, you know. And that's not the gospel, folks. That is control and manipulation, and that's condemnation. And see, that's the kind of stuff I was used to after my regular pastor, right? trying to control us. You know, if you've ever been around some religious preaching, you know, that they are the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, so I'll move on past that. But look, this is what I mean. This is, if we are the body... And his children, why would God afflict us with anything? So if you're trying to live the Old Testament and you're going through a hard time and you think God's putting you through it because you've been a bad boy, a bad girl, that is not the gospel. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's Old Testament. There was anything like that. Who lives in you? So if God is sending you through the mud and the crud, he's sending himself through the mud and the crud. The only thing that God would want to do is strip off our flesh. And that's what we have the Sermon on the Mount. It's all about. Blessed are the poor in spirit when you come to the end of yourself. Blessed are those that mourn when you begin to mourn over the fact that you're selfish. Blessed are those that are meek. Meeked. You know what a meek person is? It's a person that's really, really strong but doesn't crush your hands when they shake it. It's somebody that, that maybe they live in a dump. And when they shut off their faucets, they have to crack them shut. Instead of, you got real soft, little delicate meekness, and you shut the little faucet off with gentleness. Amen? It's like somebody trying to twist a bolt when they've been told, you know, use it hand tight, use a wrench. That's not meek. That's not meek. Okay? What meekness is is to be able to discern a situation and offer enough power and resistance to do a well job. Can you say amen? Jesus was an example of meekness. Then it says, after meekness, he goes down, blessed are those that hunger and thirst. So first of all, there's a stripping away of the old man, and then there's a building up the new. Hungering, thirsting, what? Merciful, uh, peacekeeper, on. So receiving, stripping, and flowing, doing. Okay, so that's the Sermon on the Mount. It's all about... God being on the inside of you and stop living for God with your own strength. Okay, let's move on. Okay. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 3. Look what this says. Okay. All right. I left out 5 and 6, didn't I? Okay. 5 says, always line up with what you hear, or what you hear with Scripture and the nature of Christ. In the New Testament. Did Jesus ever tell somebody he's not going to heal them? But you'll hear people teaching that. You didn't have a lack of faith. Jesus didn't heal you because you had a lack of faith. Do you know that's not scriptural? How about Lazarus? He didn't have any faith. <laughs> How are you going to answer that? You know? Now, sometimes our interpretation of things, your mind is too small to get the real depth you got to spend time with God so he can develop his voice in you. Because you can read along scripture and God can add to the scripture his voice and fill in a couple of dots and commas in there. It's a beautiful thing. Because God was there when it was written. Can you say amen? And now finally six. Okay. If it now becomes easy to know God's voice if we listen in the core of our being in our spirit 
and stop listening to outside stuff. Amen? Are you the type of person that always has to have noise around you? Some of us have learned to get beyond that. I was one of those. Silence really bothered me. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it's just sitting still really bothers you. You have to kind of overcome that because and regulate how much of you are really still in the flesh or the natural and how much of you are in the spirit. All right, move on to the next point. All right. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, verse 1 through 3, I do not want you to be ignorant. What does God not want us to be? Ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, not Jews, but Gentiles, carried away with these dumb idols. You know what a dumb idol is? That's everything you put your attention to. It can't tell you anything. Huh? Might have been a mascot in high school. Who knows? <laughs> Let's move on. However you were led. Therefore, I make known unto you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. So the, the still small voice on the inside of you is never going to contradict the word. Is never going to contradict the nature of Christ. Never going to tell you to do something you're not sure of. It's always going to encourage a confidence in you and a great joy and encouragement and edification to listen to God's voice speak to you. All right, so let's do another experiment. You can join along. Everybody, you ready? How many? If you want to, and if you don't want to, that's all right. But it, it, do this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I want you to tell me something in my spirit so I get used to your voice. Do you love me? And when you hear it in your spirit, raise your hand. Listen. Listen in the core of your spirit. Raise your hand high. I'm in faith. You know he loves you, but I want you to hear him say it in your spirit, listen, not with your head, with your heart. And if you're not hearing it, say, Lord, help me to hear it. Lord, help me to hear it. All right, look at all that. Very good. What'd you hear? Anybody hear something different other than I do? I, I, I love you. Huh? You know that I do? And then if you keep asking the same question, he'll add to it and you'll get a little prophecy about yourself. Yes. Yeah, see. So again, don't get discouraged if you didn't hear anything. The idea is I don't want you to hear here. I want you to hear it in your core. And if you're not walking from your core enough, get with Jesus. He will teach you how. Because many Christians today, they just stumble along. And it's sad. Stumbling along. Here God says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, and they're hiding out in some mountain, some woods somewhere, storing up food. I don't think God's saying that at all. If he says, go into the world and share the gospel, how are you going to do it living in some mountain, storing up food, waiting for the apocalypse to come? That is absolutely idiotic. I did that. See, I know I can say that. We, were, we thought we heard God saying, we're going to build a city and store up food. It's going to be a paradise. I'm serious. And you know what? Nothing ever came to pass because it was the enemy that told us, and it wasn't God. Because when God tells you something that vast, he always bears witness along the way. Are you hearing me? This is for somebody in the... Watching by YouTube. Don't be joining some cult somewhere or doing something you're not sure of. Bounce it off your elders and make sure it's in the word of God and check it, double check it. Why? Because in the last days, deception is going to be rampant. And the only way to keep from being deceived is get close with God. Right? We know that. Great shirt, by the way, you guys. That's awesome. Amen. They're in purple. It's, it's, I think it's wonderful. Anyway, okay, here it's one of my favorite colors. All right. All right. In 1 Corinthians 14, 3, listen to what it says here. But he who prophesies 
speaks to edification, exhortation, and comfort. So there's the fingerprint of God. <coughs> I'm amazed, and this is my pet peeve as a pastor. There are those people who want to come into a church and they want to display their gifts. And, you know, they're gifts of God. And they want to do great things for God. But listen, if you don't go through the right door but try to enter in some other way, you're being a thief and a robber and don't even know it. So if I come into your church and God's giving me a word, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to the pastor. I'm going to talk to if they even receive a word like that. And then I'm going to make sure that, that, you know, when I go into preaching in another church or ministry, I ask the pastor, what, is, what subject matter do you need more emphasis on? I can preach about just about anything. I've been a pastor for such a long time. You know, just any subject matter. Why? To help the body of Christ to grow. I don't want to go in and give you a word, you know, and have it just be a word. What's the word? Get in your Bible. <laughs> What's the word? <laughs> get with God. Here I'm going to prophesy. Get with God because if you don't, go suffer extra. You don't want to suffer extra stuff. All right. So let's go on. <laughs> I'm almost done with you. All right. Hearing and knowing God's voice. All right. Mark 4, 21 through 25 says, And he said to them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? What's the basket? What's the bed? It represents something. Marvin, do you know? Honey, do you know what the, the basket and the bed represents in a believer's life? Your flesh. You don't take Jesus and hide it under your bed. You don't take Jesus and put it under a basket. You don't take Jesus and hide it in your flesh so when people see you, they see you and not Jesus. How much of Jesus is actually coming out of your words? And out of your actions, do they see Jesus? Or do they see you and hear your bad confessions and your negativity and all the other things you meditate on? Come on now, we need to be ex examining ourselves to see. This is very important. It really is. To score, to score well with others and win them to the Lord, isn't it? Remember, we're fishers of men. I'm talking to you. It's very important, okay? So it's not... Ba brought to be put under a basket or on a bed. Is it not to be set on a lampstand? Jesus is meant to put, be put where in your life? Out front on the lampstand. You know, if, you, if you've got a lamp but no bulb and Jesus is the bulb, you don't put the bulb under your bed. You don't put the bulb under your basket, your flesh. You put the bulb on the lampstand. And that is to project it out of your life. Jesus is to be projected out of what you say, how you act, how you think. Otherwise, you're just hiding under a bushel. And we don't want to do that. See, man. Are you getting anything out of this? And it says, look, it says, for here, for there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything be kept sacred that won't come to the light. Now, we used to think that's negative. God's going to show you your faults. You put the bulb of Jesus on, and he's going to reveal your faults. That's not what it's saying. He's going to show you hidden things that your flesh can't pick up, that your natural man can't pick up. The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit. The bushel don't work. The bed doesn't work. Hello? You got to get it out there. Why? So that the things that have been hidden from you, God will show you. And he will show you things to come. He will declare the things that I've said unto you. You see? Are you with me? It all comes together. And he goes on. And he says, Nor has anything been kept secret that should not be made knife. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. See how it makes sense? Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. Don't spend all of your listening time listening to baseball games and, and secular things. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. But if you're not balancing out spiritual things with physical things, and you're listening to way too many physical, natural things, whether it be good or bad, and you're not listening to the word and getting in the word, you're out of balance. 
and you won't be able to hear God's voice because your basket is flooding out the light. Not me. Say everyone say, not me. Let's go on. Take heed what you hear, and with the same measure you listen, it will be measured to you again. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whosoever has the ability to hear, to him more will be given. But to whoever does not have, if you can't listen, let's talk about what you hear. If you can't listen to spiritual things, listen. This is Jesus talking here. Whoever has, the more will be given. But whoever does not have the ability to not listen, even what he has will be taken away from you. Let, let me just make it simple. You're getting older. If you don't pay attention to Jesus, you're not going to get much when you get there. He'll probably hand you a nut and bolt and say, go over here and tighten some things up. I'm just joking with you. But you have great opportunity to develop huge rewards in heaven. How do you do that? By listening to God's voice. By putting the light bulb, not under a basket, not under a bed, but on a lampstand. And that the things that have been hidden from you will be revealed. Did you know that God is, if you keep with God and keep walking with God, keep following the things of God, God will open your eyes more and more and more. And things that were out of view will be revealed to you. Things that are out of your view, God will reveal them to you. Aren't you glad? Now, finishing up. The lamp is your reborn human spirit with God in it. To, after all, God uh, indwells you, right? So take advantage of him. Don't let everybody know how ignorant we are by not listening to God. Spend time with him. It will saturate you. He will permeate you with his presence. And guess what? You'll grow. Romans 8, 14 through 16, and I'll just finish with that. Do we have, how much more do we have? Oh, you know 1 John 2 and 1 John 2, 24 through 27 and 20, talking about God in you, teaching you. Okay, all right? All right, so let's finish Romans 8. 14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Where are you led by the Spirit of God? In your head? In your flesh? In your spirit. So spirit to spirit, right? Okay. Look what it says. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The word sons there is a Greek word, very unique Greek word called weos, spelled with an H. And it means adult sons. In other words, you move from a child to an adult when you move in God. You move from a child to an adult when you move by the Spirit in God. So you immediately become an adult when you're led by the Spirit. Why? Because it's God leading you, and he's an adult. And when you bumble around, when we, when we get, you know, naturally and bumble around, please, I'm not trying to point out faults. We're babies. And that's why it says in, in, in uh, I think it's Peter, maybe in Hebrews, it says, says, he that partake of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is but a babe. So what do you do? Strong meat belongeth those of a full age who have their senses trained to discern good from evil. Let me ask you, is your senses trained as a believer to know when you're in the flesh and when you're not? Look at me. What's the answer? Do you know when you're really fleshing it out? And when you're not? And do you know that if you're fleshing it out, to stop right away as best you can? Because if you don't, you're going to have a terrible time undoing what you're sowing in the negative. And see, when you grow with God, you recognize those things because you discern yourself of God. Now, let me encourage you again. It says, if you're led by the Spirit, then you're, the, you know, the we us, the sons of God. For... You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, God didn't lead, doesn't lead you by fear. Don't be afraid. God didn't take you and put you here 
for you to just be fearful and run away. Hello? God is not retarded. Trust him more. Um, Linda and I will tell you in our life, we've been through some very hard times. But God's never left us nor forsaken us. And if it's because we were trained well, thank God, and I want you trained well too. Any way I can help you, write me, ask me questions. But training to not panic when pressure's on. Because God doesn't leave us. He even said in the Old Testament, I'll be with you when you're going through those times. But we don't look to believe for those times. <laughs> you don't have to believe for them. They come anyway sometimes. So we hold on to Jesus. We walk with Jesus. Why? Because he's asleep in the back of the boat, and we need to be too. <laughs> and, let, and, and instead he got up, and the fearfulness of people, he rebuked the waves. Get up and rebuke the waves in Jesus and rest in him. Amen. So he says, God's not giving you a spirit of bondage to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Daddy, Abba, Father. Daddy, Father. See, a lot of people know the Father as a father and they're fearful of him. But you also got to know him as a daddy. That he loves you, wants to caress you and hug you and hold you. And that's the hard part. We can see him as a disciplinarian, but as a loving father, we need to see him that. And Jesus said, he that's seen me has seen the father. And Jesus hugged kids and kissed them, and, and he came up and touched people with leprosy and healed them. By the time church grows up into that realm, amen? For the spirit himself, what? Bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Are you a child of God? Say, I am. So say, children of God, hear God's voice. Say it. And that means I will hear God's voice. Say it. Now listen, if you sat there and you didn't say that, you're in rebellion, in a sense, because your physical body doesn't want you to do anything. Remember, who's controlling you now? Jesus, I'm trying to help you. And yet, you, you won't do the very first thing. I mean, look, it says that the natural man can't even feed himself right. No, we don't want to do that. We want to enter in everything that God says entering in. Everything to make us better, we want to enter in. We do not want to sit like a mugwump. Because rapture will come and you'll be still sitting there. We don't want that. you got to be sensitive enough to hear the trumpet. Okay? You do. You've got to be sensitive enough to hear the trumpet. I listen to the trumpet of Jesus while the others just wander around. I march to the drumbeat of God Almighty while the others just flounder around. I'm a member of the Holy Ghost traveling band. I'm moving on up, moving on up to a better land. Right? So we have to make the decisions. To enter in and do those things. Okay? Because if you don't want to, what you have will be ripped off. Not by me. Not by God. By the devil. Because he can rip your flesh off any time. That's why we want to be covered in the blood. We want to be... Okay. So pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father... Flood me with your spirit. Cleanse me of all my sin. Help me not to be in the flesh. Help me to be in the spirit. And help me to hear your voice. Clearly, concisely, lining it up with the word of God. So that I be solid, stable, and faithful. In Jesus' name. Amen.